Hey guys, welcome back. My name is Scott Halverson and we are Guff Stuff Gaming Weekly. Uh, last week we talked about the terminologies for the types of games we play and to this week we're going to talk about tabletop gaming, uh, specifically tabletop RPGs, which if you recall that's tabletop role-playing games. And that would be things like Dungeons & Dragons, Aliens, GURPS, Rifts. The list goes on and on. There's so many out there. It's really hard to just narrow it down to one or even a couple for that matter. But we want to talk about how it affects our daily lives and could possibly affect your daily life if you're involved in ga tabletop gaming. Um, I know there will probably be some difference of opinions on some of this, but I think for the most part, most of this is universal and it kind of just encompasses a whole a whole plethora of ways that it has affected it, infect, infected, affected, affected your lives our lives and change how we behave maybe in just a little bit of a way. Um, so we're going to go over some of those things in this podcast and hopefully you enjoy this podcast and maybe you'll learn something from it. And maybe when you're listening to this and you get to hear some of my views and my opinions on this, you will like be able to relate to yourself and maybe some of the things you went through and some of the things that you can say, oh, yeah, you know, that, that happened to me, too. So um, we'll start off with something easy today. We're going we're gonna to start off with uh, one of the first biggest things of tabletop RPG is that, that everybody has to go through when you're playing it. You meet new people through socialization of playing the game. You just meet new people. Um, you can't really avoid that. Uh, you can play with people that you're familiar with, and that is, that is fine. You know, I mean, there's nothing wrong with playing with people you're familiar with and people you're friends with. But at some point, you're going to be down two players or be down a player, and you're just going to need a new player. And somebody is going to invite a friend that you don't know. And when you do that, you're going to meet somebody new. I have met a ton of new people this way, and I can't say that there's very many of them that I wouldn't call at least an associate associate uh, not associate i'm not trying to think of the word um a friend but maybe not a friend but maybe at least just somebody i'm willing to associate with on a friendly level um and yes i've made plenty of friends don't get me wrong i it, some of my friends i've made are lifelong friends and even if i don't speak to them on a regular basis i know that if they walked in here today to the store or i walked into their house the chances are really really good that those people would have my back and i would also have theirs and we could just sit down and play a game if we wanted. We could help each other out with whatever life decisions we had to make that day. Um, so, yeah, meeting new people in tabletop RPG is <clears throat> its a really easy way to meet new people and get to know them without, like, prying into their lives. You can learn a lot about somebody through tabletop RPG. You can learn about um, the way they behave in certain situations. You can learn about, I mean, it. It's just the list goes on and on. And um, like I said, some of my best friends, I've spent thousands of hours with tabletop gaming. I, I, don't know, I don't know how else to explain it. It's just, it's a wonderful way to build lasting friendships that will pretty much last forever. And I, I recommend that if you get a chance to sit down, even if you're not comfortable playing tabletop RPGs or... It's just something you're, you've thought about, but you just really haven't because you're not, oh, I don't know if I want to play with these people because I don't know them very well. You know what? Take the gamble. Chances are you won't regret it, and you'll love every minute of it. And, yeah, you may not love everybody you play with. And that's that's true with every, but everything you do in life. You're not going to always like everybody you play with or everybody you're hanging out with. But you will find one or two or three, maybe even four, or a majority of the players you're playing with, you'll just get along with them. Even if you have different like political views or different ways of looking at life, chances are when you're in tabletop gaming and you're playing tabletop RPGs, those won't matter. Because what matters is at that point, which we're going to get on to the second point of how it affects your lives, is decision-making abilities, right? Um, when you get four or five or six or whatever it's going to be sitting around a table... There's going to be some conflict of interest, I promise you. That is one of the first things you learn while you're playing tabletop, table, tabletop gaming, um, RPGs specifically, or not even specifically, but you will learn that 
this player wants to do this thing, this player wants to do this thing, and the rest of the table doesn't care. <laughs> so you will always have at least two factions for the most part in almost any RPG arguing, or tr not necessarily arguing, but trying to sort out their differences one way or another, depending on the game style, uh, decision-making, just trying to figure out what they're going to do. And me, when I'm doing a, being a DM, it is a very... Uh, interesting to sit back and watch the players interact with each other and try to not necessarily make decisions based off how they would do it as a person but how their player would do it and you could take a player who's generally timid and generally peaceful but they're playing say a barbarian orc barbarian and they're a belligerent turd you know and you take that timid, normally timid, mild person, which in real life has a personality of, uh, you know, of a little mouse, and you, they turn into an absolute monster when they're tabletop RPGing as an orc barbarian. They're not afraid to go ahead and say what they need to say. They're not afraid, I'm the big orc, you will listen to me or I'll club you. It's, it's very interesting, like I said, as a DM or even as a player. Sometimes it's not as fun as a player because I'm like, usually I'm on the opposite side of that spectrum where... My player, my character is the one has set feelings on something, and then of course there's other one that argues with me. So I mean, it's still fun. Don't get me wrong. It just it's it's much more fun from a DM standpoint, at least for me in my perspective. When I'm sitting here watching players, I I could just sit back for a half hour and watch players discuss what's going on, and not say a word. And at that point, we're still playing the game. By the way. You may not think we are, but we're still playing the game. Most players aren't playing from their personal opinions. They're playing from the characters' opinions. And it's really, like I said, it's really interesting how decision-making abilities get thrown into this. And it's actually really, really fun to do. And it, it loosens you up a little bit. It lets you, if you're a normally quiet, reserved, introverted person and that, like, doesn't chat much when you get into a situation like this you can really get out there and just be something else and not have to worry because everybody else at the table is playing a different character also so and, but you're not being refilmed usually you're not being you're not on stage so you don't have to worry about any of that pressure you're just sitting in a room with a group of other people that are doing the same thing as you so it makes it that much easier to let loose a little bit um and if you don't believe me in that I would recommend one time, if you think you have a group of people that are not, <clears throat> oh, they're all goody two-shoes, let them play a campaign where they're playing the bad guys. And I promise you, I promise you, you will see a different side of that nice, timid person that you have never dreamed that you would see before. And I'm not saying it has to go dark and nasty or anything like that. I'm just saying that normally that goody two-shoes healer paladin type person turns into an absolute monster, and it's... Again, very amusing. Um, but anyway, yeah, decision-making abilities. It is something that every tabletop RPG you play will put you through the tests and the trials and tribulations, and you will learn to make decisions. If not, everybody else will make decisions for you, and you will not always be happy with that, I promise. Okay, so we can't stick on one subject too long. We'll go on to uh, other things that Tabletop RPG has done for me and for other people's in the past. I know that this is a personal experience of mine, and I will talk a little bit about it. But um, when my kids were young, they all wanted to play what I was playing. They wanted to play Tabletop RPGs. They wanted to play D&D &D with us. They wanted to play whatever we were playing. The problem is, is when they start realizing they want to play with you during your sessions with your friends that they can't read. At, at the age they, they want to start playing, they can't read or write, generally speaking, um, and do basic math. You know, they're pretty little. They're like four, five years old. You know, they do basic, like they understand some basic stuff, but to grab a player's handbook or a monster manual, there's not much chance of that happening for those poor little, poor little, little fiends of yours. Um, but, or your angels, your poor little angels, I mean, we want to discriminate here. Um, but I can tell you with both of my kids, I basically told them, when you're old enough to read and write and do basic math, you can come and feel free to play with us. You can make your own character sheets. You can write your own stuff down. And you got to be able to read and write and be able to participate and do basic math. Now, you don't have to be a, 
a math whiz. You don't have to be able to do everything in a split second blink of an eye, you know. But just know how to add your basic 20, 20 dot, your D10s with your D6s and know how to add all those up and do damage and whatnot. <clears throat> and you know what? I tell you what. When I said that to either, both of them, it did not take either of them very long. You know, and there's a four-year four, four year difference between the two. So I think, you know, there was a little bit of a motivation from the youngest one to work a little harder at it. But it did not take either of my children very long to read and write and get per- proficient at it so they could play tabletop RPGs with us without much effort. And I tell you what, as a parent and a gamer, there's no, there's there's very few moments in life that you can be as proud of is when you get to sit down and interact with your children in that level and you get to see them role playing out stuff that they normally don't get to or normally don't want to do because they're afraid well you know I don't want to you know attack uh attack the orc with my dagger you know in real life because well there are no orcs first off I have to explain that to you that's we might have to have another conversation but anyhow, um, they can they can go ahead and do stuff that they normally wouldn't get to do in real life, and it gets to let them use some of their imagination to fuel some of the story that they're playing in. And I guess you know that is kind of a very good thing for young minds is to be able to use their imagination. I'm a, I'm a firm believer that using your imagination helps create a better human. And helps create your uh, ability to think through problems and just deal with normal life stuff on a different level. And I'm so, I I can't, can't, like I said, I can't be proud enough of my children. They both, um, the oldest one obviously when he started playing was, I mean, he was old enough to read and write at the point anyway. But my youngest wasn't necessarily proficient. But it did not take her long. Or it didn't take either of them long to get way better. So they wanted to participate, and they got to participate. So it was a lot of fun for them. So anyway, yeah, we're going to move on now. Uh, we, we did talk about decision-making abilities. We talked about math, English, reading, writing. All that goes right into tabletop RPGs. Um, some of the other things that maybe people don't think about, that you just don't think about and with tabletop RPGs is you get some history lessons. And it's not necessarily history lessons about real history, but it'll be a way for you to look at history in different cultures at, with, at a, with a different way of looking at things. If you have a DM that's really good with manipulating and uh, making – I even shouldn't say manipulating, but creating a world that is got rich in flavor and there's some deep culture stuff going on. You know, I, for me specifically – you know, my DMs when I was had to had that depth, that deep flavor, and you know, it got to me thinking in real life when I was playing because I started about ten years old. So, but it got me thinking in real life. Wow, you know, if these guys are making up this much history and depth in the real in, in the, their imaginary worlds, how much history and depth do we have in our real world that nobody really thinks about? And so, I kind of got to be a little bit of a history buff because of it. I love history. I love talking about history. I like knowing different parts of history that you maybe didn't think about. You know, it's like, for instance, when we're playing a game and say we're on a boat and we're sailing across this big sea and we're attacked by krakens and, you know, monsters, ocean dwelling monsters. And we manage somehow to get out by the hair of our chinny chin chin, right? And we land in another island or another continent and we come across a race of people we've never met before. You know, and they're not necessarily aggressive, but now we have all kinds of decisions to make, you know, and we learn all kinds of things about their these people and their different cultures and their different histories, and it's really awesome. It makes you think about that stuff in real life, too. At least for me, it did, and I, I like to think that I like to try and keep everything related to how I would look at things because I don't want you to think that I'm trying to just force feed my opinions down on you. That's not my point. My point is just to share experiences with you and go through this stuff and culture awareness and history all from a good campaign will really make you think about stuff a lot. 
And it'll also make you think about stuff in the real life. It's just how it works. And you can't really help that. It's just kind of natural transition. And it's kind of cool. I, I really appreciate that part. Um, and yeah, and so the last but not least, I think the other thing that I think of, it, which doesn't even make us, it makes a lick of difference, right? Is your ability when you take tabletop RPGs to deal with people from different walks of life. And I know we kind of talked, dabbled a little bit about that or talked a little bit about that during the socialization part back at the beginning. But it doesn't matter if you have a 12 year old and a 60 year old at a table. They generally will play the game and get along just fine. It's it's quite amazing. We're normally in a setting outside of the game. Maybe that 12 and 60 year old just have nothing in common and don't give a rat's butt about each other at all. But you throw them into a game, you set them across the table, you roll some dice, you make a characters, you make some decisions together. And it's quite amazing how it doesn't matter what walk of life you're from, whether you're a full blown business person or a, even a homeless person that's just looking for some warm time sitting at a table for a few hours a night while they're, you know, while they're trying to decide how they're going to fix their lives. You know, it, it really doesn't matter. Everybody sits at a table, they play together, and what you do in the real world does not make a difference what happens inside of the gaming world. It's just uh, you're taking a break from real world, and you're going to go on, and you're going to get into a game, and you're going to play. And it's absolutely wonderful. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this podcast. I, I know I'm a little over, but I, it's, it's just so much a person could talk about, and I ramble a lot on this with the people that I play with. But tabletop gaming has affected my life, has probably affected your life, even if you didn't know it, one way or another. Maybe it's not directly through you, but directly through people you know. And that is my perspective on how this works. I hope you enjoyed this podcast, and until next time, my name is Scott. You call me Guff, and I'll be signing off.